Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is a travesty playing some Neverwinter Nights 2 using the End and Dream Prince mod. Alright, just to recap, we are here in the Red Mountains at the Karakul camp here. And we just picked up a another companion by the name of Jmot, who is our thief. And next thing I want to do is start looking around for places to buy and sell some stuff. So let's take a look at a map first. We are right here in the Karakul camp. And it looks like we have Olfen Smithy and Vice Vilesaur's stall over here. And let's see, let's take a look at this area here. It looks like we got a bridge or something going down here. Yep, we got a, a rope bridge going across the canyon there to the south. And probably another one up north. Alright. Okay, so getting back to the task at hand, let's see. Here we got Olfen. Looks like he's a smithy here. I greet you. So, you're the Lakelander, eh? Can't say you're as impressive a sight as the others said you were. But then, I'm not so easy to please. I'm not here to impress you. Good. Do what you need here, and then leave. We were managing fine before Inzul decided to involve foreigners in our affairs. Well, let me see your items. Alright, let's see what he's got. Looks like he's got armor, weapons, and that's it. Let's take a quick look at a couple random items here. Fine fitting breastplate high steel. Hmm. Plus two and bonus twenty five hit points. Hearth shield. Small shield plus two with fire resistance. Hmm. Strong arm chain. I think we've seen this stuff before. Chainmail plus two with a strength bonus plus two. Quite expensive, but after we sell all our junk, we should probably have plenty of money here. And let's see what we got for weapons. Hope diminished. What is this? Dagger. Plus two. With a plus two magical damage. On, f and on hit it does fear. But mind affecting saving throw penalty. Blade of Gondor. What is this? Greatsword plus two to hit. Bonus versus evil. And it's keen. Hmm. That's a good blade right there actually. The Flail of Flight. What is this here? Flail, plus one attack, plus one budget, budgeting damage, and causes fear. Ooh, High Steel Hoarfrost Short Sword. That might be good weapon for Jmot. And let's see what else. What's this? The Weeper. A rapier, plus two. Plus two piercing damage, and constitution drain. Hmm. A lot of good weapons there, but I'm not going to buy anything just yet. I want to do a quick recon of all the stalls and everything right here and see what we have available to us here. Let's see, anybody important over here? No, nope, just tribesmen. And who's this? Your drool. Let's go talk to this guy. What does the Lakelander want with mighty your drool? What do you do here? You speak to Yordrul, honored hunter of the Karakul. There are few with as great a knowledge of these mountains as he. These peaks are the hunting range of Yordrul and his hunting hounds. Hey, you look impressive. Care to share your secret? Ha! Ah, you make it sound like Yordrul snaps his fingers and becomes what he wishes. Yordrul's frame has been a work in progress since his first kill, and Yordrul was young then. So will the great Yordril impart his esteemed advice? Yordril can do this, though it is not possible for him to pass on all of his learnings. Some things must be seen and experienced, not simply spoken of. Well, teach me something. Alright, so it looks like he teaches us some feats here. Great fortitude gives me a plus two to all fortitude saves. I don't really need that. I got a high enough one already. Steadfast Determination, use your Constitution modifier for will saving throws. Eh, monkey Grip, that might be a good one. I can use two-handed weapons with one hand, but at a penalty of minus two to attack. Improved Power Attack, yeah, that might be good too. I'm actually thinking Monkey Grip. Let's see, how does this work? Let's go with Monkey Grip. Very well, now you shall pay Yordru his tribute for his exchange of knowledge. 
Eight thousand gold. Hmm. I think we can afford that. I think I'm actually going to get that, though. That might come in handy. Let's get that. The tales of the Lakelander ring true. You learn and demonstrate your ability swiftly. The teachings of your drill are over. Take your leave. Hmm. Does he do that again? I was hoping you could point me towards some action. Is the Lakelander not already here on some great purpose? There is nothing Yordrul can guide the Lakelander towards. Though Yordrul is in need of a forager's services. Tell me more. One of Yordrul's hounds has fallen sick from a warg bite that has festered. Yordrul requires the herb our people call Zurumul. Yordrul must tend to the hound and cannot make the journey to gather the herb. If the Lakelander will travel into the mountains and bring back Zurumul, Yordrul will present him with a gift of the caracal. What does the Lakelander say to Yordrul's offer? Agreed. Then Yordrul shall await the Lakelander here. Alright, Festering Hound. I need to find a herb known as Zurumul. Hmm. Alright. Let's see what we got over here. And... Vile Sore. Another shopkeeper. Yes. Ah, uh, now here's a touch. My first Western customer. Oh, that's not true. What do you mean? I traded with a slave once. Sold him a dirk. It was a great deal. Got the dirk back when he was done with it. Ah, uh, Vile Sore, your goods and your amusing tales make your visits here tolerable for me. That was not funny. My story's not good enough for you, Lakelander? Then maybe it will please you to spend your hard-fought coin on my goods instead. Hey, very well. Alright, let's see what we got here. The Summer Wind. It's a cloak. Bonus hit points, 9. F fire resistance, 10. And gust of wind. Hmm. Runic Mountain Striders. What's this? Plus two armor class modifier, fortitude save, and regeneration. Hmm, that's a good one too. Let's see what else he's got. He's got some decent potions. Oh, he's got the luck stone, medallion of thought, immunity and mind affecting, and diplomacy plus five. Ring of spell battle, spell resistance 18, and dispel magic. Trink of independence. Mind affecting saves plus three and spell resistance. Hmm. And he's got a hell of a lot of lock picks and poultices. Hmm. Okay. So this is probably going to take me a while to figure out how I want to handle all this business here, buying and selling. So I'm going to go ahead, make some purchases, sell as much crap as I can, and I will be right back when it's all done. Stay with me. Okay, finally, I am back. That took me a good hour to sort through all the gear, because there is just way, way, way many choices to pick from here. Um, what my goal here was is to try to maximize my hit chance and still have maximum damage. That's what I'm trying to go for right here, because i got a couple guys with power attack and everything, and I'm trying to, trying to maximize that so they can use it all the time. Okay, so let me do a quick rundown of some of the most important stuff that I got so you can see how everything's looking here. Let's start with Kenneth first. He still does have the Regal Headband on. That's given him the plus three charisma along with concentration and diplomacy. I'm definitely not getting rid of that thing for Kenneth for him being a paladin. He does have the Wildlands Cloak, which does give him plus two deflection, and he still has the Knight Commander's Armor, which is plus two armor, giving him damage reduction and heroism. That's really good for him, giving him bonus to hit. Uh, something I did buy was this Clasp of the Tireless. This gives him a constitution bonus plus two and regeneration. I figured that would be a good item for him because it'll increase his hit points as well as giving him regeneration at the same time. So that I had to replace the gloves that gave him the plus one bonus of strength with that. So I decided to give him this soldier's leather belt with which just gives him a strength plus one to make the, his strength an even 16. And I still have the leather boots on, which gives him a bonus on uh, dodge and movement 
hide and move silently, but I'm not going to use that. He's still got the Forge Ring and the Hoarfrost Ring, and I decided to give him this Sage's Amulet. This is the one that gives him a plus three wisdom along with a natural armor bonus. The reason I did that is because Ivan has the crown now. That one gives him a plus three bonus with the crown. So since these don't stack, I decided to give this amulet to Kenneth. And the reason I wanted to do that is because it actually gave him a bonus spell slot for level three. So that gave me an advantage there. In addition to that, of course, it raised my will my will saves also. So I decided to give that to him. And he's still got the uh, embossed heavy steel shield which is a shield plus one and it gives him a bonus uh, feat of knockdown. And I decided to go ahead and take advantage of monkey grip that I got from uh, your drool I think his name was. So I got this blade of Gondor. This is that uh, great sword plus two attack bonus and additional damage versus evil and on top of that it's keen so it's doubling his uh, critical threat range right there which gives him a 17 to 20 range for a times two crit so I'm thinking just about everything we're gonna be fighting is gonna be evil so that's always gonna be a, at least some bonus damage that I'll be using right there so the way everything is set up right now as you can see he's got a plus 14 plus 9 plus 4 hit with a uh, 2 to 12 plus maximum 9 damage and that's without power attack. With power attack, of course, that's going to drop to 1161, but it's going to increase his damage. And that's what I really want to do. I want to take advantage of power attack so I can do more damage, but not sacrificing too much attack bonus. So that's my goal right there. Of course, this is all theoretical. We haven't been in combat to see how this is going to work out, but I think it's going to be okay. Okay, let's go to Jmon next. I decided to give Jmon the Cerulean Cowl. And the only it's not really good for a rogue because it is high spellcraft and high concentration. It'd probably be better on Ivan, but Ivan's got the crown, and I'm not going to give up that crown for this this uh, cerulean cowl. But the thing I'm using this cowl for is the regeneration. So now Jmont also has regeneration, and that's what I want to put in there. I couldn't find any helms or anything that I really like to give to Jmont, so I said, hell with it. I'm just going to give him this thing just so he can get the regeneration bonus out of it at least. He's still got the Scout's Cloak, which uh, increases hide and move silently, and now his armor. Way back when, like probably 10 episodes ago or so, I found this Wildland garb that I always kept with me. Now this garb is primarily set up to be used by a Ranger because it gives him bonus Ranger slots, but Jmot can wear this, and the reason I want to give him this is because it has displacement and it's plus two armor. And his max dex with this thing is, is still five, and right now his dex is five, so this is going to work out better for him. Now, once I increase his dex to 22, I'm going to get rid of this, because that's going to increase his uh, dexterity bonus to six. And since this armor has a max dex of five, I'm going to ditch this armor, and I'm going to go back to his Caracool Stalker armor, which gives him a dexterity bonus of six. Plus, it's plus two and damage reduction and move silently. But since this armor gives him a higher armor class right now, I'm going to use this until I cre increase his dexterity, so that'll work out fine. He's still got the leather bracers here, which gives him a little dexterity plus three. I'm not going to move that anywhere else. And I decided to give this healer's utility belt to him, too. I'm not going to use him for healing or anything but like that, but I want to use it for the fact that you can use cure serious, cure serious wounds with this. So... I decided to give that to him. He does have the leather boots yet, which gives him a plus two dodge modifier and bonuses to hide and move silently. He still has a luck stone, a sapphire signet ring, and I gave him the ring of long life. Now this is a better one than the one I found in a couple of episodes back. I actually got 30 hit points with this. If you see their hit points, Jmot's hit points are actually only 63 compared to everybody else's. That's pretty damn low, so I wanted to increase his hit points. So. I had the money, I said hell with it, you know, I had a ring slot open, I might as well buy it. So it gave him 30 extra hit points, which increases that up to 93, and I think that's going to be pretty important. Okay, uh, let's see. Now, he is a dual wielder, and like I said before, he does have weapon finesse, so he's wielding, he's dual wielding two short swords. One of the short swords I did get with, for him was a high steel or frost short sword which is a plus two bonus and cold damage and he still got the Cobra's Kiss which is just a plus one two hit short sword but it does extra acid damage and it could possibly cause poison on hit okay so that's Jmont next we have step. Ivan 
Follow. And like I said, I did ha give him the runic horned crown. That was giving him the plus three bonus to wisdom, which I want to get. And it's still giving him spell spellcraft and concentration bonuses too, so that's a good deal right there. He's still got the elegant cape, which gives him a plus two on charisma, which should help him with turning if that should arise. And he's got the Borang Full Plate still, which is a uh, full plate uh, plus one with uh, damage reduction and a fortitude increase. And he's still got the Gloves of Diligence, giving him a plus four increase in concentration. And a Scout's Belt with a reflex plus three. He had a really low reflex, so I said, you know what, I better give him some kind of increase in that. So it boosted it up to seven, so it's a little bit of a help. And this is something I bought right here. This is going to be something good, too. Uh, these are the Runic Mountain Strider boots right here. It gives them a plus two dodge modifier and increased fortitude. And additionally, it gives them regeneration. So as you can see, so far, these three characters have regeneration. And as you will see, Crispin will also have regeneration. So all four of my players or uh, characters will have regeneration. So that's a really good set of boots. They're quite spendy, but it was worth it. Okay, so, uh, let's see, I gave him the Wildstone, which gives him a plus two natural bonus and plus one to concentration, allows him to do color spray three times a day. And he's still got the Tempest Ring, and he also has a uh, Sapphire Signet Ring, which gives him a, a, dex, or a deflection bonus, too. Now, f as far as weapon, I did have this High Steel Warfrost Warhammer. I didn't want to get rid of this thing because it's plus two and it does cold damage. So I decided to give it to Ivan. That replaced a mace that did uh, electrical damage, uh, but it was only plus one. So I figured this one would be better in his hands. So. And additionally, he still has a Steel Embossed Heavy Shield, which gives him a, a, shield, a Heavy Shield plus one and Knockdown. Okay. Yes. And last, we have Crispin. Crispin still has the Runic Helm. Uh, the reason I really want to keep this for is the fiery uh, saves increase and the taunt increase because he does like to taunt every once in a while. He does have the cloak of long lake which gives him a plus one deflection and universal saves. And I did buy this armor for him. This is the uh, fine fitting high steel breastplate which is plus two armor and a bonus of 25 hit points which gives him a total of 168 hit points so he's going to be a hell of a tank. Okay, and he does still have the leather, leather bracers, which give him a dexterity plus two, which makes his dexterity even 16, which makes him, uh, which gives him a uh, bonus of plus three for armor class, but that will be perfect with this breastplate because the max dex is plus three right now, so that'll work out great. And he still does have the soldier's leather belt, which gives him a strength plus two, now making that a even 20. He does still have the Soldier's Boots, which is a plus two dodge modifier. However, a minus two penalty to move silently, but he's certainly not going to be doing none of that. Okay, and we still got the Lux, a Sapphire Lux Stone, the Natural, which is a regeneration ring, and the Minor Nature Ring, which gives him acid resistance. And now, since he is the one that is highly proficient in flails, I gave him all kinds of feats and flails, so he's focused in that. I decided to let him keep this high steel heavy flail it doesn't do additional uh, elemental damage unfortunately but it's a plus two bonus and that's what I really like about that one and plus the fact that it's a flail he's gonna get all the bonuses from his feats and he still has that high steel heavy shield which is a heavy shield plus two okay so I think we're gonna be alright with that as long as everybody's got regeneration and we got maximum potential to put out some serious damage we should be okay. Now, I did do a couple changes with spells too. Let's take wish. a look at our spell books. This is Kenneth right here. I decided to go ahead and just get Endure Elements for first level spells. I got two here and I got uh, two on Ivan. That way I can cast Endure Elements on all four of my party members. Is there something you wish? In addition to that, I got some uh, attack enhancing spells in level two. And like I said, because of the fact that he had that. Uh, uh, that Sage's Amulet, which gives him a bonus to his wisdom. He actually got this bonus spell slot here, so I decided to put Magic Circle against Alignment in there. Now, that one really won't help us too much, but it does have some advantages. Uh, the plus two deflection bonus isn't going to help too much, because most of my characters already have a plus two deflection bonus, and deflection does not stack. However, it does give us a plus two on saving throws and immunity to mind affecting, so that might that might come in handy at some point. So I decided to put that in there. Plus, that's a long-lasting spell. So, okay, going back to Ivan. I did actually set up with two greater magic weapon spells. I'm going to put one on Crispin and one on Kenneth, 
to maximize their potential to do some tanking. I'm not too much concerned about getting magic weapon on Ivan or Jmot because Ivan's going to be spending more time casting spells and getting up in, in the fight with everybody else. And Jmot, I'm going to definitely use him to get around behind groups and do some striking with some sneak attacks. So he's got that advantage already, so I'm not too much concerned about that. And I still wanted to have some offensive spells in here, so... So Ivan still has some offensive capabilities and stuff. So, that is it. Hopefully this setup is going to work okay. Alright, so let's get back to the game, shall we? Alright, let's take a look at the journal. Now I think what we're going to do is start heading south to deal with this one right here, the No Trace of Blood quest. Jmot suspects that the Cerulean Dawn may be involved as their past aggressors have involved the abduction of the Karakuro tribesmen. If you wish to investigate this, Jmot suggests exploring the area south of Karakuro. These, This is the one dealing with the missing sentries. So let's take a look at a map. We are right here in the Karakuro camp. And here's that bridge to the south. It looks like it goes up to the mountains here and possibly leads to a cave. And it might head farther down this way, but we'll find out. So, let's go. Alright, here we are at the bridge. Wow, look at this. That's cool looking, man. Nice canyon right there. Alright, so it looks like the trail goes up further into the mountains. So, let's see, is everybody with us now? Let's go ahead and start putting up our long duration buffs here. Yes, that is so. Let's put some in the elements. Walk in my step. Follow me. And let's put up some magic circle against evil. Yes, that is so. And graver magical weapons. Yes, that is right, so. That's all our long duration stuff there. Yes, that is so. Follow me. All right, let's take a look at these weapons now that they got greater magic on them. Yeah, enhanced plus two. Is something you wish. And enhanced plus two. Nice. Okay, so. Yes. see what they are now with power yes, attack that is on. So. All right, let's go. And the trail leads up. Oh, what is that? Dominated caracal and a dominated war dog. Hmm. Let me guess, that's what's going on with these guys. Oh, here they come. Let's get some Play Divine Might. Play on oh, got some speed going on. Let's see, are they coming up here? Perish get them. Okay, Jmon. Let's see if we can do some backstab. Let's see, Jmont. Ooh, those guys are casting spells. They got some protections up. Let's go back here. Actually, let's hit this guy. Oh, there's another one back there. Well, it looks like we're doing okay so far. It looks like, oh shit, Crispin got cursed. Alright, where'd that other one? He's dead. Was there another one? Yep, there's one up here. Let's get back here, do some backstabbing. Alright, looks like everything's working yes, out that well. Is so. Got power attack yes. on, and improved power attack. Yes, that is so. Hmm. Okay, now we got this curse, and I wonder if this is the type that will go away after a period. Alright, let's check these dead bodies. We got a fire agate. And 
and steel ignitable arrows, piercing plus one and fire damage. Hmm. All right, let's take a look around here. Okay, so it looks like we got two choices. The trail keeps going up this way, and there's another trail going up that way. Let's take a look at a map. We're right here. Well, it looks like they actually meet up here, so let's go this way. I'm kind of hoping that curse will wear off on Crispin. Okay. Let's see what we have up here. Might have a nice view. Let's take a look here. Hmm. Big valley down there. Alright, here's where the paths meet right here, so it looks like our only choice is to go this way. Alright, let's yes. take a quick look at Crispin. How is that curse affecting him? Decrease in armor class. It's not affecting his ability scores. Okay, I think we'll be alright. Let's keep going. Man, look at this nice pool of water down here. And oh, there's something there. Dominated Caracals, and there's a cave entrance back there, too. Hmm. Is there something you wish? Alright, let's go ahead and do some Divine Might. And let's go get him. Oh! Yep. I don't remember the name of that one. It's like Curse of Impending Blades or something like that. <laughs> Got a good hit there. All right, where is Jmot? Let's get him in the position where he can take advantage of some backstabs here. Let me sneak attack this dog from here. Oh, where'd this guy come from? Let's get some sneak attacks. Took him out. Let's see, can we get back here? Sneak attack this guy. Okay. Yes. Doing pretty good here. Is there something you wish? Yep, power attacks are still activated. Okay, let's go back here. Check these dead bodies out. We got another fire agate. Let's see, was there anything else back here? Nope. Okay, so it looks like one of those curses ended on Crispin, so I'm hoping that one on Kenneth will now go away soon. Alright, so we got a cave entrance. Let's take a look at a map. Yep, yeah, it certainly went down here to this cave. Didn't look like we could connect with anything over here, though. Hmm, maybe there's a way from this way. Okay, let's go inside the cave then, shall we?